Many of us have either heard or know from firsthand experience that some of the best times to catch the biggest walleyes of the season are spring and fall. But what's really cool is when you get a scientific study to back up those facts and help explain why all that is, and that's what we're gonna talk about here. First fish of the day, 27 and a quarter. That's what I love about fall fishing. So the North Dakota Game and Fish did a study, a tagging study on walleyes, and it was based out of Alkaline Lake, which is not a lake that I've fished before, but the principles of the study should hold pretty well for walleyes in any system, I would imagine. And what they found was that they did in fact confirm that on average, more big walleyes are caught during either the spring or the fall season as compared to the summer. In terms of the confirmation data that they received, they tagged a bunch of fish. The average size fish they tagged was like 18 inches. During the summer, the average size of fish that anglers reported catching that were tagged were about 17 inches. During the spring, the average size of fish that was caught with a tag was about 20 inches, which is significantly above 18. And in the fall, the average size fish returned with the tag was somewhere like 19 to 19 and a half inches. So there was clearly a statistically significant bump during those time periods. Because now we're talking average fish caught. So there's gonna be some smaller ones in the mix too, but on average, one and a half to two inches bigger. So first things first, what we kind of thought was true from experience, we can see proven out statistically in tagging data, which is very cool. But then they also read into some of the biology, some of the literature about why this may be, and there was two things that they found, and this I, I found all of this on a podcast that they put out called Walleye, A Tale of Two Factors. If you wanna see the podcast and listen to it for yourself, I'll link that below. But in order to kind of sum it up for you, factor number one, something that I didn't know, was that walleyes of different sizes actually feed more often and more efficiently, meaning they convert more of that food to energy and body size and that sort of thing at different water temperatures. So the smaller fish, the zero to eight inch size class they did first, feeds most effectively in about 72 degree water. So that is, you know, getting close to peak summer, um, maybe slightly out of the range of like August, you only get, if you get 78 degree water temps, that's kind of beyond anything. But if you've noticed that in the summer, you tend to catch a lot of the runt fish that time of year, those are the ones that are really in high feeding mode. When you get to fish that are in that eight to 15 inch category, the juvenile walleyes, they feed best from about 68 to 72 degrees. And the bigger fish, anything above 15, the mature adult fish feed best from between like 60 to 66 to 67 degrees, somewhere in there, low to mid 60s. So you can see there's even a bigger jump between the mature fish and those juvenile fish. Now, when are you gonna see these cooler water temperatures? Well, as the post-spawn bite starts to heat up, and as the early fall bite starts to heat up while the water's cooling down. And I, I've definitely noticed that, you know, a lot of the bigger fish that we catch post-spawn tend to happen in that early period when you're in those low to mid 60 ranges. And when you start to get closer to 70 degrees, definitely do start to catch a lot of smaller fish. The other thing that I had noticed in the past, you know, in, in fall, I had always waited for the big post-fall turnover bite, which is another thing entirely here but there typically has been a bump, not in the overall bite in the system, but in the size of fish that we start catching kind of in that mid to late September, early October. So when we start to see, you know, 60 to 65 degree water, I noticed that we started to catch some more of those bigger fish in the system again, even if we weren't catching a ton of fish overall. So in my head, I was thinking, I, I didn't think this was gonna happen until post turnover, but I'm noticing that we're catching some of these bigger fish. And that has to do with the fact that it's in that sweet spot in the temperature zone for them to feed. You might still catch some of them deeper. You might not be catching them in five, 10 feet of water yet, like you do post turnover potentially, but it started to happen. And this is some scientific backing as to why that was the case. The other thing that I kind of gleaned out of this was the fact that in that late spring, early summer period, you're kind of catching everything up way shallow, two to five to eight, maybe 10 feet of water type of thing. And then as summer starts to kind of sink in and you get mid 60 to upper to 70 degree temperature ranges somewhere in there there's kind of this phenomenon where the fish start stratifying out into different depths now i'm not saying we're talking about thermocline stuff yet but if you can find a bunch of small fish say in like 15 feet of water 20 feet of water the mid-sized juveniles whatever it is 
you might find some of the bigger fish now either running up shallow because they're chasing totally different bait or hanging out more in that 25 30 zone already so they're kind of the first ones to slide down into that zone it seems like and this would explain why because they're trying to stay in that 60 to 65 degree water which they can still find at that time of year as you get to the middle of the summer it almost doesn't matter how deep they go they might not be able to get to a comfortable temperature zone for them but they're definitely going to try to stay as close to that as they possibly can so the fact that water temperature impacts the feeding of walleyes not as just a hole but per their size length structure that's pretty cool now the second factor that's two that they talked about was the fact that hormones in fish increase in the fall towards the spawning period and the hormones of male and female walleyes impact feeding conditions differently so testosterone is actually an appetite suppressant so the males are feeding less on average as you get into late fall through winter through spawning the females on the other hand have estrogen and estrogen is an appetite increasant <laughs> an appetite increaser so the female walleyes are feeding more frequently because they're trying to build mass to support their eggs that they're going to lay during the spawn period so the other factor of why you tend to catch more big fish during the fall and the spring and also by the way like early ice period is because you're catching by and large more female fish than you are males and females are the larger fish in the system now this has a lot to do with why that post turnover bite can get so good even though the water temps are getting kind of below you know that comfortable zone where they're feeding most efficiently the female walleye's hormones are going crazy and that's what's driving their appetite and driving their bite so yeah water temps might be 48 to 52 when that post turnover bite gets really bonkers but that's because their hormones are making them feed more aggressively and also you just happen to be around more fish because of the turnover factor so now the lake is turned over a lot more fish are coming up shallow a lot more of the bait fish they chase are coming up shallow so you're around more fish that are hungrier than they were before which is great for you if you're trying to catch really big walleyes so fisher people for a long time have kind of suspected that that was the case but it's always fun when you can get some science to put behind your experience to know that, that is in fact the way those fish behave and two cool factors as to why they behave that way and i think the thing that i'm gonna take away from this the most personally is one not to get too discouraged when in the middle of summer you're struggling to catch nicer fish and you're catching a lot of small ones but two there's kind of two big fish bite windows as you get into the fall when you start to first hit that 60 to 65 temperature range you're going to get more big fish feeding activity if you can find them though they're still challenging to find perhaps and then the post turnover bite when they start really pushing up shallow that's when things get really bonkers because you got the hormones driving them and they're easier to find and again like i said before this counts for first ice because you're still looking at that increase in hormone levels and the water temps haven't gotten so suppressively cold that the bites turn off altogether now when you get into late january february then water temp gets so inhibitive that it kind of counteracts that hormone effect probably and that's why you get another slowdown the, you call it the the dog days of winter it's the same thing as like in the summer in terms of their feeding activity but then as you get into the spring again and the temps start to warm up until spawn those females are still going crazy so pre-spawn spring fishing is when most of the biggest fish state records whopper reports all that kind of stuff happens so takeaway if you want to catch big fish you might have to bundle up and do it when it's cold thanks for watching if you like this video hit the thumbs up to say so think about subscribing to the channel maybe consider contributing and supporting on patreon and either way i'll see you in another video so later fisher people Stud <laughs> walleye thick absolute that beast is a tank first fish of the day is an absolute stud you throw one of them in the mix that makes any day look good right there <laughs> <laughs>